Hello and welcome to Finance Conversation. This is the 10th episode of the Merging Life and Money Show and I am super excited to be here with you today. If we are meeting for the first time, I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I help frustrated professional women acquire and apply the relevant skills and knowledge they need to take control of their money from the inside out, manage their finances, and understand that they can live their best life with the money they have. Thank you for joining me today. If you are watching the replay, make sure to type hashtag replay in the chat and leave me some comments and questions. Welcome, welcome, and welcome. I come to you live every Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time to share valuable information about how to achieve financial wellness and live your life with means and meaning. Today's show is actually the ninth in the series titled How to Build a Secure Financial Plan. If, uh, well, today I will be exploring uh, step eight of the process, which is the basics of estate planning. So grab a pen and a notebook as I will be sharing tips and ideas that you might want to write down. If you have any comments or questions, make sure to put them in the chat. And if you want to talk to me directly, I will share my contact information a little later in the show. So let us begin. So far in the How to Build a Secure Financial Plan series, I talked about seven keys. Financial mindset, budgeting, debt elimination, savings, insurance, retirement, and investing. And today I will uh, be sharing information about the basics of estate planning which is one important and challenging task that most of you are justifiably hesitant to do because it is complex and time consuming and it implies confronting potential family conflicts and death. Last week, I talked about growing your money, growing your wealth, and you would want to establish who will get, it, get to handle it uh, because you might not be able to take care of it uh, if you become incapacitated, nor will you be able to manage it if you are not around anymore. So I would suggest that you do that soon if you have not done so. Let me start by saying that estate planning is not just for the wealthy or the very old, okay? You have an estate plan whether you realize it or not. The question are, do you have a planned estate? So are your financial and personal interests organized so that upon your death, your wishes will be met with minimum with, of inconvenience um, and expenses to your estate and family? Or will the state dictate the distribution of your assets because you failed to plan. So estate planning could be very convoluted, okay? However, the benefits of planning far outweigh any potential difficulties. Before I go any further, let me tell you what I will be, dis I will be focusing on today. I will explain estate, what estate planning is. I will also explain its benefits. And last but not least, I will review the estate planning document that you must consider. Millions of Americans spend excessive amounts of time worrying about their income tax returns every year. And death is one of the areas that few people talk about, much less time to prepare for. However, the undeniable fact remains that Yes, you will die. And yes, you need to start thinking about it sooner rather than later. In fact, now might be the perfect time to begin forming your estate plan. We have so many examples of what happens when you die without a will. By the way, a will is only a part of your estate plan. It is not your estate plan. You will remember when the Queen of Soul, Aretha Franklin, died, right? 
She joined a long list of famous people, including Prince, Pablo Picasso, Bob Marley, and even Abraham Lincoln, who also did the same. So by not preparing an estate plan, she made the task of settling her affairs more complicated for her survivors. So while your estate may not be as large or complex as a famous singer, it is still important to have a plan in place in the event of your death. So what is estate planning? Estate planning is a term given to the process people go through to prepare for the legal, financial, and personal realities of their death. While an estate plan is a collection of tools specifically designed to address this kind of issues, estate planning is not a single topic, but rather a collection of topics that involves the practical realities surrounding death and mortality. Estate planning is one of the most important steps any person can take while alive to make sure that their final property and healthcare wishes are honored and that loved ones are provided for in their absence. Regardless of your age or personal circumstances, creating an estate plan is an essential task for every adult. Also, understanding what an estate plan is and what specific issues your plan might address is the first step. So what is an estate? When you hear the word, the word estate, you might think of what, mansions, huge um, stock portfolios, art and antiques, and other pricey possessions like cars, yacht, and fine jewelry, basically the thing, the thing that high net worth individuals, especially elderly one, own and leave behind them after they die. But that is not what estate planning is all about. To understand estate planning, there are some fundamental ideas you need to begin with. Legally, an estate is simply whatever a person leaves behind after death. Some people might have a lot, while others might leave behind less. But everyone, no matter who they are, how much they own, or where they live, will live behind an estate. So your estate is essentially everything you own, including your home or other property, car, bank accounts, investment, life insurance, furniture, and personal possession at the time of your death. An estate plan gives you a say in how those things are given to the people or organization you care, you care about. It arranges your affairs and leaves a written record of your wishes and intention. Um, it indicates how you want your property, your belonging, your cash, and your, and your financial assets distributed. If you don't make these decisions and designation while you are alive and able, state law and probate courts will make them for you after you are gone. And the result might reflect your desires, might not reflect your desires, I should say, or suit your family's need. Basically, a comprehensive estate plan can resolve a number of legal questions that arise whenever anyone dies or become incapacitated. And the question that comes to mind are, what is the state of their financial affairs? What real and personal property do they own? Uh, who gets what? Does a personal guardian need to be appointed to care for minor children? How much tax? we need to be paid in order to transfer property ownership. And so last um, but not least, what funeral arrangements would be appropriate? So let's look at estate planning um, and how it benefits you and your survivors, okay? So estate planning allows you to make decisions 
that includes medical treatment care options and the distribution of property when you pass away. It is an ongoing process and should be started as soon as you have any measurable asset base. So as life progresses and goals shift, the estate plan should, be, should shift in line with new goals. Lack of adequate estate planning can cause undue financial burdens to loved ones. Estate taxes can run as high as, guess what, 40%. So at the very least, a will should be set up, even if the taxable estate is not large. So regardless of your age or the size and complexity of your estate, an estate plan can accomplish the following. You could identify the family members and other loved ones that you wish to receive your property after your death. If you don't plan your estate, you run the risk of having family members fighting over property and over difficult decisions such, such as end-of-life care. Uh, if these issues cannot be easily resolved, the court system may become involved. So if a dispute over the estate goes to court, expenses can quickly add up. The process can be uh, painful, painful, pa painful, oh my goodness, painfully slow. And in extreme cases, family relationship can be ruined, okay? Land can be troublesome to divide with um, the problem compounded if some family members want to sell against the wish of other family members. An estate plan uh, can ensure that your property will be transferred to those you have identified as quickly and as and with as few legal hurdles as possible. It can minimize the amount of taxes that will need to be paid in order for your property to pass to others after your death and provide adequate, adequate financial resources to pay for any estate tax without forcing the sale of assets. And yes, estate planning is often associated with the super rich because of the estate taxes. Admittedly, federal, and I'm saying that federal estate taxes typically only impact the ultra wealthy. That is because the estate tax exemption is 11.7 million per person or 23.4 million for a married couple in 2021. Uh, like Bill Gates, maybe. Uh, mainly, only, <laughs> mainly only people who die with assets valued above that sum pay federal estate taxes. However, estate and, inher and inheritance taxes are another matter. Estate taxes are assessed on and paid by a deceased person's estate, right? and the inheritance taxes are assessed and paid by the deceased heirs and beneficiaries. In some cases, the estate can arrange to pay inheritance taxes on their behalf. As of 2020, 12 states and the District of Columbia imposed an estate tax and six states imposed, imposed an inheritance tax. And the current federal tax, estate tax um, exemption is slated to drop drastically in 2026 to 5.49 million per person, adjusted for inflation. So an estate plan can avoid the time and costs associated with the probate process by utilizing estate planning tools like living trust and payable on death bank accounts. So I said probate, right? So what is probate? Probate is a legal process of proving a, a last will and testament, which means verifying that the will is legal and the deceased person's intention are carried out. Probate also occurs when there is no will 
and the probate court must decide how to distribute the assets of the deceased estate to their loved ones. Contrary to popular belief, wills do not help you avoid probate, okay? The terms of your will guide probate, which can make the entire process, including any necessary visits to a probate court, easier for everyone involved. Also, I like to note that a number of assets do not go through probate, like bank accounts, retirement funds, and life insurance policies can be transferred directly to the beneficiary upon the owner's death. And assets in the trust are managed and distributed separately from the probate as well. They are distributed according to the terms of the trust. Right, so an estate plan um, benefits are many. So it can actually help you take care of you as well. So what I mean by that is that estate planning doesn't just come in handy once you are dead, okay? It can also include a durable power of attorney and healthcare proxy, two important legal documents that ensure your wishes will be carried out if you are temporarily or permanently incapable of handling them. So I said a durable power of attorney. What is that? A durable power of attorney appoints a trusted relative's or friend to manage your legal and financial affairs if you cannot manage them independently, right? A healthcare proxy gives someone permission to make healthcare decisions for you if you cannot communicate them yourself. So without this directive, also known as a living will, it could get complicated to decide who among your loved ones is in charge and is legally allowed to take action. So in the worst case scenario, someone the court appoints or a hospital staffer unfamiliar with your wishes may wind up making decisions for you, okay? So an estate plan can also set forth the kind of funeral arrangement you would like and how related expenses are to be paid. So through your living trust, your, sorry, I should say your estate plan, you can appoint a guardian for your living dependents. If you die without a surviving spouse to take care of your children and other dependents, who will, um, who will get custody of them? So without an estate plan, the probate court will appoint a legal, a legal guardian for them usually a family member, such as a grandparent, or not on an ankle. Uh, alternatively, a third party, such as a family friend, can petition the court to be appointed as a guardian. If a minor child has no surviving family members and a third party does not step forward, the child could become a ward of the state and enter the foster care system. Therefore, if you want to say in decided who will care for your child in the event of your death, you need to identify that person in your will. It is also a good idea to name an, an alternate garden just in case something happens to your first choice. An estate plan can also establish annual gifting to qualified charitable and nonprofit organization of your choice to reduce the taxable estate. And last but not least, let's take a look at the estate planning documents you must consider. When it comes to estate planning documents, having a valid will is a good start but a will in itself is just one number of different type of estate planning documents you will need in order to ensure that your healthcare decisions and final wishes regarding your property are honored. So what document are you likely to need? First, 
have a letter of instructions, okay? Please do not live a life without one. This document helps your executor and, their, and your heirs fulfill your wishes. A letter of instruction is almost like a cheat sheet for anyone involved in settling your affairs, okay? So unlike a will, this letter has no legal authority, okay? However, it can provide an easy to understand explanation of your overall, overall estate plan to your executor and lay out your wishes to your family for things not covered by the will. So when you write this letter, make sure to include the following. Important account numbers and how to access them. Bank, insurance, investment, retirement, credit cards, bills and utility, phone numbers and computers, etc. Okay? Include also contact information for important persons such as your employer, your lawyer, your insurance agent, your investment advisor, your estate planning attorney if you have one, and also include details of any benefits that you have like military, pension, life insurance, and uh, the username and passwords if necessary, but because you do not want to leave password in your will because wills are public records, okay? Next type of document that you would need are powers of attorney. Powers of attorney generally grant family members or loved ones the power to make certain decisions for you. There are three types of power of attorneys and that I'm taking the simplistic approach here, each of which can be an important document as it relates to a comprehensive estate plan. So the first one is a general power of attorney. So what does a general power of attorney does? It grants its holder power over a broad range of legal, financial, and medical decisions, okay? Now, the durable power of attorney is used to give its holder the power over medical or financial decision in the event that you are incapacitated, right? A special power of attorney is used to grant the power for a particular business transaction. Another type of documents or tool that you have to have in your toolbox when it, as it relates to estate planning is advanced medical directives, also known as a living will. An advanced medical directives dictates the type of life prolonging, prolong, prolonging treatment that you wish to receive in the event that you are unable to communicate your desires. For example, an advanced medical directive could allow an individual who does not wish to be kept alive in a vegetative or irreversibly comatose state to ensure <laughs> comatose state to ensure that those wishes are honored, okay? The next type of document that you need is wills. A basic will, commonly referred to as last will and testament, is a common way for you to direct the distribution of your estate. Real estate, money, possession, etc. after you die. And increasingly, however, wills are being replaced in some instances by the use of trust. And I do apologize if I've, I'm a little bit um, teary here because believe it or not, my parents, my father died 20 years ago and my mom died 18 years ago and the estate has yet to be settled. So that is something that is really um, close to me. So making a will is a lot more complicated than just writing your wishes down on a piece of paper. Every state has specific rules that apply to people who make a will. And if you fail to follow those will, 
those rules saying your will is useless. Okay. This requirement includes being at least 18 years old, being sound of mind, making your will in writing, writing, okay, signing the document, having the document signed by two adult witnesses. However, meeting the basic legal requirement is not enough to ensure your will does not um, that's what you want it to do. An effective will is one that meets state requirements, but also one that is matched to your particular needs and desire. So once you do up your will, where do you keep it? A probate court usually requires access to your original will before it can process your estate. It is crucial then to keep the document where it is safe and yet accessible. Avoid storing it in a bank safety deposit box or in any other location where your family may need a court order to gain access. A waterproof or a fireproof safe in your house is a good alternative. Then, let at least your executor know where the original will is stored, along with needed information, such as the keys or the password or the code for the safe. Besides, it is wise to duplicate signed copies to the executor and your attorney if you have one. So the signed copies can be used to establish your intentions in case the original is destroyed or lost. However, the absence of an original will can complicate matters. And without it, there is no guarantee that your estate will be settled as you had hoped. So store the documents with care. The last document or the tool that I'm going to address is trust. Trust are instruments created either during your lifetime or in your will that grants rights in your property to others knows, known as beneficiaries. There are a wide variety of trusts, wide, offering a wide, a wide range of potential benefit from tax savings to avoiding probate. So you might also consider setting up a trust as a way to provide for a beneficiary who is underage. Once a beneficiary is deemed capable of managing their assets, they will receive possession of the trust. Okay, I think we touch on a lot now. So I'm going to stop here for today and do a quick recap. So I shared lots of information about the importance of estate planning. I talked about a lot of things. <laughs> I explained what estate planning is, its benefits, and what document that you must consider having. And um, before I forget, let me share my contact information, as I promised. Uh, you can reach me by sending me an email at mj at mariejocesar.com or by sending me a direct message uh, on Facebook. Uh, now, I'm going to leave you with this last point. Estate planning is not only for the rich, for the rich, for the wealthy. And it doesn't have to be overly complicated or, ex or an expensive process, okay? Once you understand the basics of what an estate plan can do for you, your property and your family, it should be clear why creating a plan of your own is so important. But knowing and doing are two separate things, especially when it comes to estate planning. Quite often, People are either reluctant to address issues so closely related to mortality and do not think they have enough to worry about that, you know, would require them to craft a plan. So when you are hesitant about starting a plan of your own, it is often best to focus your attention away from yourself, right, and your possible death and think instead of your loved ones. An experienced estate planning lawyer 
also known as a trust or estates attorney, can work with you to create an estate plan customized to your needs, financial affairs, and family, and family situation. I would strongly, strongly recommend that you listen to the replay. And the sooner you get started with your estate plan, the better. Remember, however, that an estate plan is only effective if you keep it current. So review your plan regularly or after major life changes like marriage, divorce, or death in the family. So keep an eye on changes in tax laws or other financial legislation as well. So if your estate plan is out of date, your heirs could still encounter some of the problems you tried so hard to avoid, okay? So as you know, I like to end the show with a quote and today I chose one from my friend Susie Oman and it reads, estate planning is an important and everlasting gift you can give your family. And setting up a smooth inheritance is not as hard as you think, as you, as you might think. Okay, so um, I prepared, I know it's a very complex topic or subject or whatever you want to call it, and it's very emotional as well. So I prepared a comprehensive handout that you can access tomorrow by joining my Facebook group. And the handle for that is finance conversations with an s.com or by visiting my website which is marie jo César, which is m a r i e j o c a e s a r.com for more information about how to build a secure financial plan join me next week Thursday at 5 p.m. Pacific Standard Time 6 p.m. Mountain uh, Standard Time, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 9 p.m. Atlantic Standard Time uh, for my Bermuda peeps. I will be talking about step nine of the process, which is the importance of planning your finances together when in a relationship. Thank you for being here today on the Merging Life and Money Show. I am your host, Marie-Jo César. I will be back again next week. Until then, continue merging life and money. Bye for now.